The Lord be with you. Thank you all so much for that this morning. Again, my, my resolution for 2019 is to, to put the sermon before the special music, because it's not fair to have to, to lead into that. Well, this morning we are listening to Paul's words in the third chapter of Colossians, beginning with verse 12, reading through verse 17 there. Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 12. As you're finding that, or maybe just gazing up at the screen, I want to say thank you to Nikki, wherever she slipped off to, for covering Christmas Eve, and for my friend Emily, who I trust was a blessing to you last week as we were gone. But this morning we're listening now to Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, reading through verse 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, God, may we hear what you would have us to hear, that we may do what you call us to do, so that we may be the people, Lord, you call us to be. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, it's December 30th. Christmas was not quite a week ago, and and I, I suspect you probably have in your family an unofficial end to Christmas, right? Now, liturgically speaking, it doesn't end until next Sunday, so you'll come in and this will still be up next Sunday. But I suspect you and your family have sort of an unofficial end. For, for mine, when I was growing up, my, my mom had a sort of unofficial window of Christmas. You don't decorate before Thanksgiving, and you don't take down the decorations until well, sometime after New Year's. Now, that part was a little amorphous. Sometimes that meant you woke up on January 1st and Mama was picking the ornaments off the tree. Sometimes that meant somewhere around my birthday, the end of February, Mama would go, I think we probably need to take this tree down. And then there was that time when I was in the 8th or ninth grade, I think it was the ninth grade, actually. We had just moved into our, our trailer, and, and icicle lights had become very popular. You know what I'm talking about. Not just straight strands of lights, but they would hang down at different lengths. And I guess from a distance looked like glowing icicles. My mom had bought a couple strands of those. Stepdad stapled them to the fascia of the trailer. And when they hauled it off a couple years ago, I think they were still there. But you have an unofficial end. Maybe it's when the candy canes are all gone, the leftovers are cleaned out, and the stockings come down, or when school starts back. But eventually, we, we put it all back in the boxes. Eventually, we sort of say, well, that's over. It's time to get back to normal. I always grieve that a little bit, if I'm honest with you. Christmas needs to hang around. I think. There's a time, I think, you know, we put the shepherds and the wise men, baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph, put them back in the box, and then we we get to those other passages in the Bible. The Ten Commandments. The Exodus. Maybe, maybe some of the other stories in the Gospels, Jesus walking on the water, feeding the 5,000. Or we really get down to business with Paul. 
Paul who loves to tell us what to do. There's a passage like that we've read this morning from Colossians. Maybe it's Paul, maybe it's not. I'll let the scholars argue about that. But, but, but here are, are words that sort of give us instruction. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. That's fruit of the Spirit sounding sort of stuff. Now we're getting back to normal. No more angels singing on high. No more swaddling clothes. None of that stuff. Just getting back to the stuff you can put a handle on and carry with you, right? Even later on, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. With gratitude, sing songs of, of worship, of psalms and hymns. Spiritual. That's stuff you can put a handle on. You can put in an order of worship in a bulletin every Sunday. That's getting back to normal. But did you notice that right smack in the middle of this, there's a line that reads as if Paul or the writer of this letter were sitting down on the floor under the Christmas tree, gathered around all the scattered wrapping paper, maybe had just come home from the Christmas Eve service, the warm wax still on his finger from the candle, when he writes, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I mean, that sounds like a Christmas carol, doesn't it? In fact, if you were to read that line, I suspect somewhere around late May, it would almost sound syrupy. Almost sound kind of saccharine. Like Paul, Paul needs to go back and revisit that line again in the midst of all of this. Chosen ones, holy ones, clothe yourselves with all this stuff, bear with one another, forgive each other. And above all, maybe Paul should have written something else. Not... Love. Love is hard. Love in, in the midst of Christmas is, is a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. But I, I got to tell you, friends, I don't know how your experience was, but mine at Christmas, love seems even harder. I mean, you haven't met all my kinfolks. To sit around the same table, in the same room, with the same people, knowing what they do, knowing the decisions they make, and having driven five hours to just sit there and listen? Maybe it's obligation, but there's something deeper. And I have to tell you, it's no secret where we were last week. We were at Disney World, and, and, and love is really hard at Disney World. <laughs> when you're standing in line for 45 minutes for a ride that lasts 45 seconds with a four-year-old who's climbing up one side of you and up another side of somebody in front of you. And you, 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 love is hard when you're waiting in that line. I will say I enjoyed the camaraderie of seeing other parents who felt the same way. It's hard when you miss lunch and it's 2 o'clock. But anyway, love is hard. Love isn't easy. You can't put a handle on that and carry it around. Maybe, maybe if Paul had had a little more time to think, he'd have written something else. Maybe it should say in verse 14, Above all, clothe yourselves with rightness, which binds everything together in perfect uniformity. That makes more sense. I can use that better. Clothe yourselves with rightness. Be right, correct. Have the right thinking, the right belief. If you do that, then everything else will take care of itself. I remember when I was in college, I was having a conversation with my friend Brandon, a good friend of mine. Brandon and I, though, have very different theological views, particularly about God. Brandon is a, what we call a five-point Calvinist, a, a self-proclaimed one. And he and I were talking one day, not about Calvinism, but about our, our convictions, our beliefs about women in ministry. And I said, Brandon, you know, I've heard enough women preach, and I've, I've seen them. I have friends who claim to be called to ministry, and I, I can't, can't figure out why in the world anybody be against this. 
Brandon said, oh, it's against the Scriptures. It's in the Scriptures. The Scriptures say a woman, shouldn't, a woman should be silent. He's married now. I don't know how often he says that. <laughs> woman should be silent in church. Woman shouldn't do this. And I said, well, well okay. I said, but you, you understand we're just disagreeing on interpretation. Yes, yes, but, but you know, as, as a good Southern Baptist, you shouldn't associate with, with, with churches who have women as pastors. I said, but, but now... You and I disagree on the nature of, of God, right? I said it wouldn't be too much of a stretch, I think, in fact, to say that perhaps at least in, in terms of our epistemology or saying that we believe in two different gods. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. But I could come preach for you, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could come preach. Where's the line for rightness? See, rightness, it has a handle on it, but it's hard to figure out. But what's more is there will always be something greater than that. I think it's why he was right to say, above all, not rightness, but love, despite how hard it is. Because the truth is, friends, when it gets right down to it, you will sacrifice a great many things on the altar of love. Even rightness. When I was in seminary, I had a good friend. We'd meet for lunch every so often at a place called Taco Cabana, which if you haven't been there, I'm sorry. They don't have them out this way. We would meet for lunch there. It's pretty cheap. We'd sit down and talk. And I remember one day Mark was just he was eat up. I said, Mark, what's going on? We were part of a group where uh, Truett had put us all together because we were all from very similar life situations. Newly married, right out of college, just moved to, to Waco. Mark and I were talking. I said, what's wrong, man? He goes, I just don't know. I, I feel like my wife and I are arguing all the time. I said, well, what about? He said, oh, just, just stupid stuff. He said, I'll be, I'll be sitting in the living room, and she goes into the bathroom, turns the light on, comes out, and doesn't turn the light off. In my house, you turn the light off. He said, she goes in the bedroom, turns the light on, looks around for her earrings. When she can't find them, she leaves and leaves the light on. He said, one day, I was sitting at the end of the couch. I looked down the hall. Every light was on. I'd had it. He said, I just got mad told her, you were going to start turning those lights off. I said, how'd that go? <laughs> Not good. I said, well, well, I said, maybe, just me. I said, do you ever think about turning them off yourself? I hadn't thought about that. A couple weeks later, we were eating tacos. I said, Mark, how are things going? He said, man, they're a little bit better. I said, has your wife started turning off the lights? No, but I have. It just wasn't worth fighting about. That being right isn't as important as love. She doesn't turn the lights off, but at least she's still there, right? Above all, Paul said, even with this other stuff in front of it. Clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and bear with one another, forgive one another. All of those things are good, Paul says, but you can't do any of them if you don't have love out ahead of it. Above all, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it makes you want to cuss. Yeah, it makes you mad. Yeah, it's going to make you, make you just not want to talk to anybody sometimes. But above all, Paul says, clothe yourselves with love. And that last part is the one that just, it's just syrupy. Which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Boy, that sounds like a hippie song from the 60s, doesn't it? Binds everything. Not everybody in the same family. Not everybody in the same church. Not everybody in the same political party. Not everybody in the same nation. Not even everybody on the same planet. Everything 
in perfect harmony, Paul said. Everything. Do you know how many times I've wanted to throw my smartphone across the room? Everything in perfect harmony. That's what it says. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. That sounds kind of Christmassy, doesn't it? Sounds like something you might just box up with the wise men in the manger and put in a Tupperware tote till next year. But don't. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. And when we do, All the other things we think are important, we find we will sacrifice freely on the altar of love. We will find we will put it all down for love. Because in the end, it's the very thing that God did for us. Put it all down and nailed it to a cross of love. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. May it be so with us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, giver of the Holy Spirit, Give us the the strength, God, to clothe ourselves above all else with love. Whatever else we may deem important, whatever else we may deem worthy, whatever else we may call conviction, God, help us above all of that to place love. For, Lord, it is exactly what you've done for us. So as one year ends and another begins, Help us, Lord, to continue on, above all, clothing ourselves with love, binding everything together in perfect harmony. Be with us now, Lord Jesus, we pray in your holy name. Amen.